Greetings family, peace and love to you and yours. This is Guru and thanks for visiting my channel. Family, this video is about a DC police officer who will not face criminal charges in a 2016 fatal shooting of a motorcyclist. Terrence Sterling, 31, black man pictured here of Fort Washington, Maryland was fatally shot by a district police officer after police said he intentionally drove the motorcycle he was riding into a police cruiser on September 11, 2016. That's right, you heard it family. Because this man drove his motorcycle into their vehicle, which could have been an accident, they shot and killed him. Family, does this remind you of anything? How about the story of the, some, um, the officer who shot this Australian white woman on the side who appeared on the side of their police cruiser? This story resembles that. This man just happened to ride his motorcycle into the side door. It could have been an accident. As a matter of fact, I believe it was an accident because once you hear the video of a witness, you'll hear how the police officer opened the door when Terrence Sterling was trying to or attempting to ride his motorcycle away. And he was only traveling at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. His motorcycle hit the car, the police cruiser, not very hard, mind you. But the fact that it hit the car, the police officer shot and killed him just for that. So you might as well say because of a car accident, the police officer shot a black man. This is the reason why we say black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives do matter. And this is the reason why we say it. Because too often, people who are not black show disregard for our lives. And for a simple infraction of a car accident or a motorcycle hitting a police cruiser, the officer shot and killed him, dead. It resembles another story. It resembles the story of the police officer who shot the white Australian woman who appeared out of nowhere next to their police cruiser shortly after a loud bang or a loud noise was heard by the officers. So, of course, they were startled and accidentally shot and killed her. In this case, this brother here was trying to go around the police cruiser while the officer opens the door, which caused him his motorcycle to hit the car. And then the police officer shoots him right outside of his window, shoots him dead. So, again, this is the reason why we do claim black lives matter, because they do, in fact, matter. Our lives do matter. And we say this because you guys fail to realize and you fail to value our lives. You value yours because after all, when a white woman gets shot and killed by a black police officer, you guys want to press charges or you're at least considering pressing charges against a black officer. But you won't do it when it's a white officer involved killing a black man. Never do you guys do it. Very rarely, I'll say, do you ever do it. And when you do, it's always a slap on the wrist. It's, it's actually an insult what you guys do when it comes to taking responsibility for your actions as white police officers killing unarmed black people. From men to the women to our elderly and to our children, you guys have disdain and no regards for our lives black lives matter I digress I'm gonna go into this story further so federal prosecutors will not file criminal charges against a DC police officer who shot and killed an unarmed most motorcyclist last year saying that they did not find enough evidence to pursue a case the US Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia announced on Wednesday Officer Brian Trainer 
was a passenger in a police cruiser during the early morning of September 11, 2016, when he and a partner blocked the path of a motorcycle driven by 31-year-old Terrence Sterling. The Fort Washington, Maryland man had been spotted driving erratically. Now, Trainer, the officer, 28, was climbing out of the car to make a traffic stop when Sterling revved his motorcycle and then accelerated toward the cruiser, the U.S. Attorney's Office said in a statement. Well, family, I just want you to know that that's what the U.S. Attorney's Office said based on the reports of the police officers, but you know that they like to test a lie. They lie all the time. There is an eyewitness. The eyewitness account is different. Of course, when is it always the same as what the police say? It's usually never the same as the way the police report it. The police, re when they report these things, they lie nine times out of ten if they're not planting evidence and setting us up. I'm going to repeat, if they're not planting evidence and setting us up. The officer felt the motorcycle hit the door and reacted by immediately firing two rounds at Mr. Sterling through his front passenger window. Sterling was struck in his neck and side. Now family, this that situation that I just described where the officer felt the motorcycle hit the door and he reacted by immediately firing two rounds killing Mr. Sterling. Isn't that what the black officer did with the white woman, with the white Australian woman after she appeared on the side of their car after a loud bang? They were startled and the police officer shot and killed her and white people were up in arms out there marching, holding signs, holding vigils, saying, being in the media every damn day with white tears, crying because one of theirs got killed. When they constantly see black men, women, and children being killed by these race soldiers. But it's only when it happens to their own do the white tears flow. It's pretty disgusting. Now, I'm not going to cover all the details of this article. I'll leave a link for you to be able to read it yourself, but I'm going to just read portions of it. After a careful, thorough, and an independent review of the evidence, federal prosecutors have found insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer willfully used unreasonable force and or was not acting in self-defense when he discharged his service weapon at Mr. Sterling, according to the statement from the Office of the U.S. Attorney for the District, Channing D. Phillips. Well, again, you guys always say this. You always say there's insufficient evidence. But did you ask what the witnesses, the eyewitnesses had to say? Did you take that into consideration? I would like to know if the U.S. attorney took the witness's testimony in consideration. Well, of course, if the witnesses are black, nine times out of ten, even the U.S. state's attorney, if they're white, you know how they do to us. They don't believe us. They don't believe what we have to say. No, it's only if I'm white and I say so. then then they then they'll believe you if if I'm white and I say so then that's when they believe you well in fact no DC police officer has ever been charged criminally for a fatal on duty shooting according to a city sponsored 2016 report on the district's police shootings titled the durability of police reform the metropolitan police department and use of force the report was commissioned by D.C. Auditor Kathleen Patterson. Although Trainer will not face criminal charges, D.C. Mayor Muriel E. Bowser said the police department has asked him to resign. Wow! 
Now, why would you do that unless you felt he was guilty? Why would the police... Just amazing. Why would the mayor ask the police department, ask him to resign if he didn't do anything wrong? See, you see, this is the shenanigans of white society. It's the shenanigans of white justice or so-called justice. It's shenanigans. It's foul. It's disgusting. These are things that black YouTubers week try to expose each and every day to reveal the truth for the world to know. Because, see, white people have been used to always having their only voice being heard. And nine times out of ten, it's always been some lies. And now that we get to tell our stories, they can't cover their lies. So, Trainer, who had been on the force for four years and is on administrative leave, faces an internal investigation into whether his conduct before and at the time of the shooting confirmed conformed with department policy. He could not be reached for comment. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that he's on administrative leave and he faces an internal investigation into whether his conduct before and at the time of the shooting conformed with the department policy? Are you kidding me? And then you find that there's not enough evidence, but you have to do an internal investig... This is the is such bullshit. Again, this is from white society. It's so sick. These people are mentally deranged. They are borderline retarded. Lacking common sense and decency. They have no idea the concept of what justice really looks like. To them, it only looks white. Frickin' disgusting. Frickin' disgusting. I'm gonna skip the rest of this because I, I just can't deal with it. I can't. It's so disgusting that we see this all the time. It, it is. It's, so, it's filthy. What I'm gonna do is play the video of a witness. A witness who saw this and what happened. Listen to who, listen to his words. They just shot this dude. Shoot him for no reason. Mr. Sterling walked up on the side of my car. My car's on the right hand side, and he turns and stops inside the crosswalk side after like two or three seconds later, cop car comes just like this right in front of him and just stops. He turns to the left to go, and then when he went, the cop car opened probably about maybe two or three inches, and that's when he hit right about right here. Probably a little bit harder than what I'm doing right now, but just enough to make a dent in a tire mark. And then as soon as he hit it, pop, pop, pop. And then that's when I had ducked down. When I got back up, I seen Mr. Sterling on the bike falling like that. How fast was the Not fast. Had to be somewhere between five, maybe ten. Five now? Yeah, if that. That's if that. Like, honestly, I, honestly, I wouldn't even say that. I would say probably maybe five. Because it wasn't fast. It was like a, just enough for you to turn because he was turning and it was like a squeeze between the saddle the it was like this as soon as it came up came up he was probably like this longer more like the hood part 
up, right there, and they turn like this. So the minute he's turning, by the time he gets right here, he's his will is not like completely turned, but it's more or less like this, and then that's when he hit it. Is the actual door? When I seen it, it was like about like this. That's how that's how I seen it. Cause I knew he was close hitting it. I sat in there for a minute, like in disbelief, like this actually happened in front of my eyes. Like a cop really, actually shot somebody on a motorcycle. At that time, I was like shot him for no reason. Cause what it looked like for me. I was like, they just shot him for no reason. They pulled up on him. He tried to move to the left to get away and they shot him. What did he do? He had no gun on him because both of his hands were on his bike. What could constitute them shooting him? My point exactly. What would constitute a police officer shooting an unarmed man on a motorcycle just because this motorcycle probably accidentally hit the cruiser door. What would constitute a devil to shoot his gun and kill a human being just because his bike hit the door? Now, one other thing is why would the police officers make the uh, assumption that this man on this motorcycle is the same one that was driving erratically? There's many other people who have motorcycles. I'm sure he's not the only one. Positively, he's not the only one. So, again, this was... This was uncalled for. Totally uncalled for. And for the police to have an internal investigation to find out if the officer was conforming to policy after the fact is stupid. That should have happened before they made the determination whether to charge him for murder. It seems like the police are operating backwards. But I'm going to leave this with you. This is what the father this is this is what the father says, okay? Basically he says, quote, "My son was loved by his family, his community and the community at large. You all have not heard yet the enormity of the loss of my son." Isaac Sterling said outside the U.S. Attorney's Office. Quote, he was very well-loved person. He was a very well-loved person. Downs said he was outraged to learn from prosecutors that they presented the case to a grand jury but did not allow it to take a vote on whether to charge the officer. This is white shenanigans. I'm done. I'm going to leave the description. I'm going to leave a uh, link in the description. Thanks for watching. I hate to report on these type of events because we report on these way too much. As a matter of fact, there's another article out right now about um, how many deaths have occurred since Mike Brown's killings. Uh, since Michael Brown's killing. And it's something like 2,900. I mean, it crazy anyways hey I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in the next video thanks for watching peace out